It's been 15 years since the city of Drakenheim was destroyed by a massive meteor strike. And now, 15 years later, our bard is returning to the academy where she once taught to try and find an item that she left here years ago. Overrun with monsters, decimated by the meteor, the bard looks at the ruins of what was once a happy place. Then, she takes out the crystal she got from that strange traveling merchant, squeezes it tightly and thinks of how things once were. And instantly, the world shifts. The academy is restored, it's 15 years ago, and she can hear the laughter of the children she once taught. Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at how to create advanced time shifts in Roll20. Now I did a video showing how to shift time a while back where we looked at moving a single room in time, but today we're going to see how to change an entire map along with monsters and NPCs. Now, we will be using mods for this, so a pro account is required to do what I'm about to show you. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So the first thing you're going to need is a map. And I use Dungeon Alchemist, which is a program that allows you to build maps. And it's a really great tool. I've done another video on it. I'll include a link to that down in the video description. But one of the cool things about Dungeon Alchemist is that the community can publish maps for other members of the community to use. And so I grabbed this map from a user named Kakantizu. If you have a Dungeon Alchemist license, you can go out, search for Kakantizu's School of Magic, and you'll be able to find this map. What I did was I took this map and I pulled it into Dungeon Alchemist and I modified it so that it's got this now destroyed version. So the original map is what the Academy looked like before it was destroyed by the meteor. And then the modified version is what it looks like after it was destroyed by the meteor. And what we're going to do is toggle between these two maps using the macro that we create. So once we've got our maps, the next thing we want to do is add the appropriate mods into our game. And if you've never worked with mods before, what you want to do is come here to the game settings page, go to the mod library, click in this drop down, and then start typing the name of whichever mod you'd like to use. And in our case here, there are two mods we're going to put in. The first is token mod, which comes to us from the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron. Token mod is going to allow us to move items from the token layer to the GM layer and vice versa, and also allow us to flip between different versions of our map. The other mod that we're going to install is the Metascript Toolbox, which comes to us from the Metamancer, Timaw. And what the Metascript Toolbox will allow us to do is programmatically select all of the tokens that we want to move and change the sides of. Once you've got those mods installed, we're ready to jump back into our game. Okay, back in our game, we're going to click on the Collections tab here, and we're going to add a new rollable table. And we'll call this table Academy Map. We don't want players to roll from it. We're going to say Add Item. And what I'm going to do is go into my art library, and I've already uploaded both the past and future versions of the map. So here's Kakantizu's map of the ground floor. The original version, we're going to drop that on here. And then we're going to do the same thing with the future version. There we go. Save the changes and save the changes. So now we have a basically a rollable table with our map in it. So let's go ahead. Let's jump onto the map layer. And we're going to say Academy Map. Let's give us a token. It puts it right here. And what we're going to do is just expand this to fill the whole map. And I'm just going to resize this all the way until it fills up the whole screen. All right, here we are. I've got this map filling up the whole page now. And so if I right click on the map and go multi-sided, choose side, I can flip between the past and the future, just like that. And then we can go back again doing the exact same thing. And what we'll do is we'll automate this so that we don't have to change layers to right click and choose side and all that. This will just happen with the click of a button. Now, the last thing that we want to do for the map is to double click on the map itself and we want to give it a name. We want to actually call it map. And this is important. We don't want to miss this step. So we've named the map map, which I realize is incredibly creative, but trust me, it's important. We'll get to this more in a minute and then we'll click save changes. Okay. So now our map is all set. Now let's start getting some NPCs onto the board for the past, right? So we're going to jump back to the token layer 
And this is a magical academy, so the bulk of the NPCs who are going to be here will be children. So I have a token pack of art. This one right here, Portraits and Tokens, Pack 7 Children from Jan Luz. And what I'm going to do is just pull in some of the artwork from that pack. So here it is right here. And I'm just going to grab a couple of random children and put them into classrooms. So we'll put one right here. And then I'll grab this gnome kid and put him down here. And then this halfling girl, we'll put her in the hallway. And just, you know, a handful. Do as many of these as you'd like to kind of just set the stage that this place is populated and, you know, there's life here and, and so on. And really what we want to do now is double click on each of these tokens and we want to change the name to kid. So just leave it as kid and save that and do that for each of the NPC tokens. All right, so I've named all of the kids kid. And then I also want to have a couple of teachers in here. And so I'm going to use this other offering from Jan Luz for nobles because these people look like kind of, you know, the snooty teachers that you'd have in some sort of a magical academy. So again, I'm just going to grab a couple of them. I'll put one of them in this classroom and I'll put another one maybe down here in this office. And what we're going to do is double click on these and we're going to name them faculty. And I'll do that for both of those. Okay, so we've named all of our teachers faculty. We've named all of our children kid. Now what we want to do is get the monsters in place for the future version. So what we're going to do to start with there is go to the GM layer and we're going to put our monsters on the GM layer. And what's going to happen is we're going to shift things. The monsters will move from the GM layer to the token layer. The faculty and the kids will move from the token layer to the GM layer. It's like they're going to vanish from one another. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go to my compendium here. And many of the monsters that you'll encounter in Dungeons of Drakenheim are called haze monsters. There's haze hulks, haze whites, haze hunters. And so what I'm going to do is just grab a couple of these. The haze husk is sort of your low-level zombie type creature. So I'm just going to drag one of those out onto the battlefield. And I'll copy him. Let's zoom in on this so it's a little easier to see. I'll copy him a few times and just paste him in a couple of different places. Maybe up here and maybe one over here in this classroom. And then I'm going to do a similar thing. I want some, some tougher monsters here. So this Haze Hulk, this big dude, I'm going to drag him on. And now he's down here. And then there's one more kind of big guy that I want to bring in, which is a Haze White. They're pretty tough. So I'm going to bring him on and put him over here. So now we've got our map set. We've got the NPCs on here. We've got the monsters on here. So let's start building the code that's going to flip things around. All right, so I've got my trusty Notepad++ window here, and let's see what it looks like to shift things into the future. And we're going to start with the map. And the command to change the map is going to look like this. So we start out with token mod, and what we're doing is we're setting the map's current side property to 2. So there's two sides in our rollable table that we created with the map. Side 1 is the past, side 2 is the future. And so this right here, this part is the token mod line saying we're switching the sides. This right here is coming from the Metascript toolbox. And what this allows us to do is programmatically tell token mod what item we're selecting to actually shift. Because otherwise we'd have to actually go to the map layer, click on the map, and then run this token mod command. And that would be really inefficient. So this right here is saying, okay, what we're going to do is select a token called map, which lives on the map layer. So that's why I had you name the map map earlier, because this is allowing us to choose it programmatically so that we can then set it without having to change layers and do this by hand. So this gets us the map changed from the past to the future. Now what we want to do is move the kids and the faculty from the token layer to the GM layer. And that's going to be done with a line like this. Token mod set layer GM layer. So we're moving tokens from one layer to another. And what we're saying is we're going to select all the tokens that are called kid and all the tokens that are called faculty. So you see I've got a star after here. If I didn't include that star, it means I would only be selecting one kid. It would take the first one that it found and move that one. By including the star, we're going to move all of them. Same thing with the faculty. 
And if you have other NPC names here, you know, if, if you have, you know, Bob, you know, the barbarian or something like that, you could include Bob. And then if you have some other name, you can do that. Um, I was just trying to keep things simple and clean when I actually did this for my players. So I kept generic names of kid and faculty just to, to keep things easy. But you can put any monster name or NPC name in here that you'd like. Just know that if there are more than one of a particular item, you need to include this star to make sure they all get selected. And then the last thing is we're going to move in the monsters from the GM layer to the token layer. So set layer objects, that means we're moving things to the token layer. And it's a similar deal. We're selecting creatures that start with haze. Now, again, if you also had like, you know, zombies and you also had whites, you know, you, you could do something like this where you have all of the creature types in here. But for right now, we're just going to have haze. And I'm saying that the creatures that I'm looking for are currently on the GM layer. So look at the GM layer, find the haze monsters and move them to the token layer. Okay, so let's let's take a look at this. I'm gonna highlight this command here. Let's scoop my notepad window out of the way and let's run this command. And so there we go. We see now that the map has changed. All of the NPCs are now on the GM layer and the monsters are on the token layer. So that has worked. We have effectively time shifted from the past to the future. So now let's write the code to send things back to the past. So we'll start out again with our map command, and that's going to look almost identical to the original command. The only difference really is we're going to set the current side to one because one is the past version of the map. And again, we're looking at the map layer for a token called map, and then we're going to set its current side equal to one. Now let's move the kids and the faculty from the GM layer back onto the token layer. And so for that, very similar again, we're going to select all the kids and all the faculty, which are currently on the GM layer, and we're going to set them to be on the token layer, which again is called the objects layer. And then the monsters, similar deal, we're going to select them again. They're already on the token layer. So what we're going to do is select all the tokens that include the name Haze, and then we're going to set them to the GM layer. So let's take that. And let's scoot this out of the way. And again, shift. And there we go. And we see the map has changed. The faculty and the kids are now on the token layer. The monsters are on the GM layer. And there we go. This is now all set. So now let's take this code and let's turn this into some macros so that we can click on this and run these whenever we want. So let's go back to the collections tab here. And we'll say add a new macro. And I'm going to call this macro future. We'll copy the code here, and I'm going to scoot this out of the way. We'll just paste this in, scoot it down a little further, save changes. There we go. There's our future, and let's put that in the bar so that we have it down here for whenever we want, and then we'll create one more macro, which I will call creatively enough past, and again, we'll copy and paste those lines in there, save changes, and again, put that in the bar. All right, so let's get our notepad window out of the way. And now let's go ahead and see what this looks like from our player's perspective. So I'm going to come on here. I'm going to put my bard prudence into the hallway here. And I just pulled up my player view. And again, just so you all know, the player view is a function of my screen recording software. This isn't a Roll20 feature. But we're in the player view now. And what I'm going to do is shift prudence from the past into the future. And so this is what it looks like. She's in this cozy little academy with kids running up and down the hall. We shift to the future, and now all of a sudden she's got monsters on top of her. Everything is sort of in a nightmare's world, and we probably have to roll initiative. Now, some of you may be wondering, what about dynamic lighting? Well, because the maps are the same layout and size, any wall that you draw on the dynamic lighting layer will work for the past and the future. Same thing with doors and windows. But if you want different walls to exist, you know, maybe one room is sealed off or something like that, I haven't figured out a way to do that in Jumpgate yet. So if anyone has any suggestions, sound off in the comments. So there you have it, setting up advanced time shifts in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, happy gaming.